I've been writing poems about um, Manet's um, final watercolors. He, um, he didn't know what he had until towards the end, but he had syphilis, and he was inhibited in his physical range. So towards the end of his life, he painted very small watercolors of the flowers that his friends would bring him. Um, so these poems are as much about um, illness and being inhibited in your artistic range as they are about the painting. Um, this is called Mew. Um, the painting is called Lilac uh, Don Ver. It's the best French I, I can give you. Part one. Purple lilacs in a purple light. Purple lilacs in a footed glass. Petals turning as a flock outward over the light leaned the water smeared green from the inside. Then also over the sooty shadow footed and stretched as a man's space in all directions that space can conceive of escape in into the purple light its myriad vines away from that strider grant him volume part two the water is calm the water is calm the petals above it their own splash the chaos in the droplets center as they trace with their trajectory volume what volume leaves behind the lilacs fresh as minutes off the tree the water, clear as drawn morning in winter, and inside this inside a leaf left unstripped, airless and folded in on itself, a remnant of rooted life left, also, left for contrast, also without aspiration. This poem is called Meditation. The weather, enormous as a house is to a fly, has many rooms. The rain has left. The air is sweet. Night spreads its carpet out to dry. The blinds are wide, and at their limits, I can't see the self-reflection I'm jousting with is night-backed glass. My trying hurts. I try.
until you know what that thing in the mirror is at any given moment, on any given day, not looking back like you are, but still looking. <laughs> My wife told me to put that one in. I wasn't going to. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was a water tower over the white slope. There was a water tower over the wide slope of scrub and brush beyond the rope bamboo stand at the Kibbutz's border. I would climb and sit alone and watch the dry and farmable stretches of land and watch my newfound taste for the real Wanderco Lake. A sweater druze herder raised them there, and I'd watch them spread their forelegs over the tall bushes and then fall holding tight, stripping them their food quickly so they could move on. When I found the alien bamboo that first day, it seemed a significant landscape. When you said, no, this was where I first retreated, and when I saw the bamboo slid its spring moon angling down through shallow clouds, I felt significant. But then I was moved from kitchen duty down to the bananas, and after a week of hundred-pound bunches and razor sides, dropping them apart on my shoulder and slumping through calf-deep mud to gentle them down into an idling pickup's bed amid teasing in a language I did not understand, the dull pain in my compressed spine beat like a clock or like water dripping to its own time, and it no longer felt significant to imagine the bamboo was an aperture focusing the moon's wide eye like you had mine. So I kept looking. Okay. Um, those are the new poems. The rest of them are from um, the PSA chapbook. Um, I will speak louder. Okay. I can do that. Okay, so these are, these are from the chapbook. trees aren't sexual like us. I didn't know what sexual meant. I only knew what all five-year-olds knew, that the Bartlett was a man and the Gessler was a woman. Not only because the Gessler was smaller and grew rounder, naughtier, commanded more of the backyard. Not only because its leaves were more like eyes and less like leaves. But the Bartlett stood closer to the house. Its branches wanted to join us through the windows. Their motions wanted to tell us stories. They were spaced perfectly to climb, to hold me into space. I would pick a high pair and dream astronaut dreams, where no one could find me, watch the Gessler standing alone. Its tight growth made it seem a single seed, its own planet, and a different sky in its branches. Just two more, and then I will have indulged you to ask, I will have asked you to indulge me. Okay, this is called Landscape. <coughs> Again, dust remembers me, comes to pay its respects. Over the mountains, maybe blue pinstripe, felt hat in hand, impeccably dressed and full of itself, dust comes inside its own footsteps, suit skirt, twirly, and the world turns to watch. We turn. Okay, this, um, this is called Morning Poem of Sincerity with Two Lines by a Four Year Old. Um, the two lines are actually by two four year olds, but it sounded better than the title. <laughs> I kept it with just one. Okay. One poem of sincerity with two lines by a four year old. In the thin stand, mist and thought, though my thought jars little but my eyes, jumping through them over the lichen, sometimes within itself, sometimes sideways after two squirrels. Each start starts more branches than a tree has, for my heart is like a teapot, whose mist neither settles nor rises among the leaves. Content sky. Content to thicken until heaven. <laughs> 